Martins Lysis has arguably one of the worst body types for squatting that we've seen thus far in this series. He is, however, one of the world's strongest men, as in 2019 he won the world's strongest man competition, and in 2022 he won the prestigious Arnold's Classic. Now, finding Martins' best squat is somewhat difficult. The best that we can see is a 340 kilo for 9 reps in the world's strongest man competition. Now this wasn't strictly a regular gym squat with plates, but it does give us an idea of just how strong Martins really is. With long arms and long legs making up a large portion of his 6 foot 3 body and a relatively short torso, he checks in with what could be considered the worst body type for back squatting. The long arms make holding a stable position difficult, which in turn makes holding a stable torso much more difficult than if we were to possess normal or even short arms. The longer armed lifter will be more predisposed to having a difficult time bringing their grip in closer on the back squat. Generally for the back squat, the closer we are with the grip, the better we can maintain our upper body position in terms of torso angle and our back tightness. Meanwhile, the longer legs increase the distance we must travel to achieve a full depth squat and also require greater ankle range of motion in absolute terms. Now, either or both of these in combination isn't quite so bad if we have a normal length torso. Normal in this scenario meaning in relation to how long your arms and legs are relevant to your torso. However, if we possess these attributes with a short torso, it might be said that we're up shit creek without a paddle. This doesn't mean you can't have a nice squat, this doesn't mean you can't have a strong squat. What it does mean is you're going to have to work a little bit harder to have both of these things. So where do we start when adjusting someone like Martin's body type? The first place to start is always with the foot position. As we talked about previously, lifters with longer legs will often benefit from standing slightly wider in the squat position regardless of their torso length. As we squat down in the back squat, our knees travel forward over our toes and this allows us to maintain a constant torso angle while also making best use of our knee extensors. This places the load primarily on our lower body which allows for consistent and strong deep reps. Generally, the recommended stance is approximately hip width. For the average build lifter, this is the optimal balance between quad recruitment and ankle dorsiflexion. When the well-built squatter squats with the hip width stance, he can maximize his leg drive while still needing only relatively normal levels of ankle range of motion. However, when the longer leg lifter attempts to squat with this hip width stance, they generally run into a brick wall with the dorsiflexion demands. For these longer leg lifters, after a certain point, the amount of dorsiflexion required to hit a full depth squat seems to become more unfeasible. The reason we require dorsiflexion at all in the squat is to ensure that our hips don't travel in a rearward direction. If they were to do so, this would push our torso angle forward, reducing the load taken by our knee extensors and drastically increasing the forces needed for our torso to remain upright. The longer leg lifter can combat this issue by standing outside the recommended hip width stance for squats. This allows for the hips to travel straight down into the bottom of the squat and sit comfortably in between our heels without requiring extreme amounts of ankle mobility. If we look at Martin's squat, we can see him doing exactly this. He stands outside shoulder width and begins the descent relatively normally by moving his hips and his knees at the same time, but once he reaches the bottom position, you can see that his knees remain on top of or slightly behind the line of his toes. Even though his knees don't pass the line of his toes, we can see that his torso angle remains quite consistent throughout the lift. A changing torso angle would let us know that there is a shifting of the lower body in a negative direction, which we don't see with Martin's lifts. Now of note here, when Martin's or someone of a similar body type wishes to squat with this outside shoulder width stance, it's important to note that we cannot always just drive our knees forward, which in general would put us in line with our toes if we had a normal hip width stance. Instead, we will have to equal parts push our knees slightly out as we push our knees forward. The key here is not to look for extreme external rotation of the hips. The goal is still to have the knees in line with the toes. And if you look at Martin's squats, we can see he achieves this very consistently, while at the same time we see the knees staying relatively forward, letting us know that he's making great use of his quads in the squat. It must also be noted that Martin's squats barefooted and this allows him to most likely maintain a balance between the posterior and anterior movers in his squat. Now, let's address the second issue of Martin's limb lengths, and we must look at his barbell position and his arm position in the back squat. There's two aspects we must look at. It's how high or how low the barbell is placed and how wide or close Martin's places his hands. 
The barbell placement for the short or torso lifter can be one of the most important changes due to the nature of their body type. Martins uses a moderate bar position. For example, it's certainly not a full high bar squat like someone in weightlifting like Gabriel St. Crean, but it's also not an aggressive French powerlifting low bar position. Martins assumes a bar position that ensures the barbell remains relatively over his midfoot as he completes the full squat. This is important because if the barbell is in a normal high bar position, due to his long legs and short torso, he would most likely be inclined to tip forwards as he completes the squat. An extremely low bar position would likely be very uncomfortable and potentially unfeasible due to the length of his arms. Generally, longer armed lifters have a more difficult time assuming a low bar position as supporting the low bar with longer arms is much more difficult than it would be for normal to short arms. A shorter armed lifter can nicely stack their arms in the low bar position and keep it quite comfortably in a good spot. A very long armed lifter will have a much greater difficulty in assuming and keeping this barbell in the extreme low bar position. From this moderate bar position Martins assumes, he uses a grip that appears to be as close as the length of his arms and barbell position will allow. So generally when we're squatting, we want the grip to be as close as possible as this allows us to maintain the most stacked and braced upper back we can manage. If a longer armed lifter brings their arms too close however, it's unlikely they will be able to maintain a position where the elbows are both comfortable and the back is tense due to the length of their arms. For you to figure this out yourself, you will essentially need to experiment and find the grip that feels the most sustainable while still allowing you to maintain good upper back tightness. Finally, one of the greatest things all of us can take from Martin's squat, regardless of our body type, is how well he braces for every single rep he performs. Regardless of how many reps he's doing, he takes a moment between each rep to assume the same level of tension that he applies on the first rep. All of us are guilty on high rep squats of letting technique degrade due to lack of tension over the course of a set in an effort to complete the set faster. When we watch Martin's squat, we can see he takes his time on each rep and provides great levels of consistency throughout the set. This is best displayed listening to Martins perform a set of squats and paying attention to his aggressive breathing on top of his aggressive squats. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any suggestions for a lift you'd like to see, feel free to leave them in the comments. Today's episode, of course, is brought to you by the Seeker Strength Road Your Back Squat Program. It is eight weeks in length, two sessions per week, and it will get you those results you need on the back squat.